Hey guys, it's Manny. So I am going to do the book wine tag thing and I would drink wine. I have my little bottle right here, but unfortunately I have to drive soon. So it's tea again. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So number one, Fox Wine, a book that people will judge you for liking, but you like it anyway. So for me, I really like romance and I think that as a whole, it gets a really bad kind of reputation. People don't take it seriously. They scoff at it. Um, they have these really outdated stereotypes when they think about romance, like um, a helpless female waiting around for a prince. And there is so much out there. There is any story that you want to read has been written and when you look at submitting your romance if you're a romance writer harlequin for example is not looking for helpless women generally speaking they are asking for women who are strong who know what they want who already have a career and really having that solid relationship is just icing on the cake and so <laughs> anyway, people judge me or people in general for reading romance, but there it is. The most recent romance that I read was Secret Sisters by Jane Ann Krentz, and that was a romantic suspense. It had pretty much everything that I love, and it had a strong female friendship, and just the main girl was very... Uh, she was very strong. She was a business owner. It had um, a man that was strong in his own right and completely deserving of falling in love with. I think that's really important to have somebody that has that kindness besides being strong. Um, and it had really fun supporting cast. It had murder. <laughs> I had mystery, so all the stuff that I like. Box wine. Number two, organic wine. A book that doesn't have any added crap in it. It's just written perfectly. For me, that is Oliver Sacks' work. He wrote a lot of books on neurology and he combined clinical stories with um, very human responses, personal things. So the most recent book by him that I read was his memoir, On the Move, and I really liked that because it showed his journey from being a young man who was not very responsible with his own body. Like, um, he did drugs, which I didn't see coming. He was a closeted gay man. Um, who rode a motorcycle and was a bodybuilder in his youth. So when I think of him, I always think of this old um, kind of wise man and to see all the things that he did, mistakes <laughs> that he did to get where he went was cool. And I didn't think there was anything extra. In fact, he could have rambled on for many, many, many more pages and I would have been thrilled. A really spicy, wintry read. So I wasn't sure if I should pick a book that takes place in winter or what, but I'm going to pick Henry and June by Anais Neen. And it has a crazy love triangle. Um, it is a diary, so it's based on this girl's real life experience with Henry Miller, another one of my favorite writers, and June, that was his wife, and the romantic entanglements that all three of them had with one another in um, 1920s Paris. So a really interesting setting for me. and absolute crazy spicy stuff. A really sharp and aggressive breed that you couldn't put down. 
So that is Vietnam Bleeds On by LCP Denver. And that is a book of poetry that was written by a guy who was in Vietnam. And each poem was like a punch to the gut. Um, really deeply personal, really emotional, really gave you a glimpse of what somebody went through. One of the saddest ones for me was a poem about how he had this letter, he was drafted, he had to go there, and his wife was pregnant, and when he came back, he didn't have a wife anymore. She left because it was, you know, they were young, and it was so hard to be separated, and then the separation of him and his child because of what the government did to him, sending him over there, it was just heartbreaking. Um, anyway, I highly recommend that book, it's amazing and so personal and so brave to be willing to share your story like that. A book you didn't expect much from but ended up getting blown away. Um, for me, that was Murder on the Trans-Siberian Express by Stuart M. Kaminsky. Kaminsky, um, and the whole series. He wrote a whole series about a Russian detective, and I ate it up. Um, it's this fun, fun book series to read. A good summer read that is super zesty. So for me, that is Selected Poems by Jorge Luis Borges. I hope I'm saying that name right because I am not Spanish. Um, but he writes about where he lived in South America a lot and it is very tropical and green and interesting for somebody who's already been a northern person. A book that has a little bit of everything in it. That would be Stranger Music by Leonard Cohen, and that is poems and lyrics, and um, there he talks about everything. Um, romantic relationships, spirituality, religion, myth, um, politics. Gosh, there's nothing that that man didn't write about at some point. His silliness. A full-bodied book that is dark and juicy, which would be, for me, The Prince by Machiavelli. You can't get much more dark and juicy than that delightful little book of political intrigue. <laughs> a smooth, easy read with a soft finish. Ruby by Francesca Lea Block. It is a young adult book or new adult book, I'm not sure which but it has a love story and also kind of a coming of age for the main character so and it's has a a nice feel to it it's very poetic and my favorite book is the little prince i've talked about that before so it's just one of those timeless classics that i can read at you know, that I have read at different ages and gotten different things out of. So I'm hopefully going to get even more out of it as I get older. So I'm going to finish my tea. I hope that you have tea too, and I will talk to you next time. Goodbye.